her father's uh, son was dying in a hospital in the West Coast. This boy was dying. No one could seem to help him. His father was a student of the science of mind. Yes. The son belonged to some weird cult of some kind. Uh, medicine couldn't do anything for the boy. He was in a comatose condition. His kidneys had ceased to function. The uh, father went into the hospital. He asked for guidance what to do and what to say. And uh, when he got to the bedside, his son faintly recognized him and went off into a sort of a semi-coma. Then the father said he was guided to do it. Uh, he said, uh, Jesus is here. He's laying his hands upon your son. And he's uh, making you whole and perfect now. In about 10 minutes time, the boy, the boy asked for something to eat. His kidneys began to function. And he was released the next day from the hospital. What is it all about? A black man sees a black Jesus. A brown man sees a brown Jesus. And a yellow man sees a yellow Jesus. This boy, that was a hypnotic suggestion to the boy. The boy had a, had a picture in his subconscious mind. They had taken from a statue or a prayer book. And uh, <clears throat> he believed in the uh, hypnotic state that Jesus was there. A projection of his own thought created by himself. The subject of hallucination and according to his blind belief was it done unto him. Whether the object of your faith be true or false, you get results. The boy had the blind belief in that hypnotic or comatose state that Jesus was there. A subjective projection of a picture in his own mind. It's like this. If I hypnotized you and put you into a deep trance and I said to you, uh, when you give you a post-hypnotic suggestion, and I say to you, when you come out of this subjective trance, uh, you will see your grandmother. You'll offer her a chair. You'll conduct a conversation with her. You will do exactly that. Good heavens, your grandmother isn't there. Down. She's busy elsewhere. That's called a subjective hallucination. We don't see your grandmother. That's what you do. See That's you. a thought pattern in your subconscious mind. If you had never seen your grandmother, you couldn't do that. But I would assume that you had a picture of your grandmother in your mind. These truths are so simple. A boy of seven could understand them. Uh, Ruggiero, vice president of a bank, an old friend of mine. He lost a lot of money, all gambling in Reno. And uh, he said... Uh, <clears throat> Well, I'm studying the science of the mind. He said, I've heard you say that you cannot lose anything except you admit the loss. I said, that is true. If you admit the loss, we can't do anything for you. Because then you have accepted the loss. But you refuse to accept the loss. So I said, well, then why don't you practice what you know? So he said, I mentally and spiritually identified with that $25,000. It comes back to me, magnified and multiplied. Uh, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Uh, he did this every night for a week. And he didn't deny what he affirmed later. People are constantly denying what they're affirming. And they never get anywhere. They're pressing up and down on the elevator. He had a dream the seventh night of a certain horse. And the man in the dream said it will come in at 20 to 1. This was a week before the race. He and his wife go weekends to the races. So that for, that's relaxation, a uh, for a little fun. Uh, he put $1,500 on that horse. He got back far more than he lost. You cannot lose except you admit the loss. And it may come back to you in ways you know not of. Because the ways of your subconscious are past finding out. Here's a ball player that's told he'll be crippled for life. He knows the laws of mind. 
He pictures himself, imagines himself on the ball field. He makes this vivid and alive. And he's actually living the role. He's in the ball field. He's I'll not push. in the hospital. I'll he's in the ball field in his mind, imagination. He feels the tangibility of the ball, the naturalness of it. It's all vivid and real. He's touching it. He's kicking it. He had a dream. And a wise man appeared in the dream. He says, you'll be back in the field tomorrow. More than a fish. Healing. Whatever you imagine and feel to be true comes to pass. The subconscious sometimes presents a person, a holy person in your mind. And intuitively, you know you're healed. It may be the picture of a woman, a Madonna, and all religions of the world have a Madonna, that the Madonna. same woman. There's nothing new about the Queen of Heaven. It's lost in antiquity. It's the female aspect of God in you. Let's be still, close our eyes. God is the only presence and power, and all the rest is but shadow. In him we live and move and have our being. If there's anything bothering anyone here, the healing love of God is focused at that point in your mind where the problem is and is completely neutralized and wiped out, making way for the Holy Spirit to flow through you. The miraculous healing power of God is flowing through each person now, vitalizing uplifting, strengthening, healing, making each person whole, radiant, and perfect. Each person is, is submerged in the holy omnipresence, and the light of God shines in the minds and hearts of all. God is guiding each one. Divine right action reigns supreme. God's oh, love saturates the minds and hearts of all, and God's healing love dissolves everything unlike itself in the subconscious mind. The love, the light, and the glory of God surrounds each person. A miraculous healing is taking place now in the minds and hearts of every person. Jesus answered it. You leave here with the praise of God forever on your lips. A merry heart do it good like a medicine. There's the transfusion of God's grace flowing through you now. The love, the light, and the glory of God animates and sustains you. God is our host, and we are his guests. And God is saying to all of us, Come unto me, all ye that labor. I, the infinite shall give you rest and peace and God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes there shall be no more sorrow no more crying no more sickness for God's love is healing us now God's peace fills our soul and God in the midst of us is making us whole now The peace of God fills your soul, and according to your faith, is it done unto you.
möchte Ihnen im Namen aller Anwesenden ganz, ganz von Herzen danken. Sie haben uns unendlich viel gegeben und wir alle würden uns freuen, wenn Sie diese Aufgaben noch viele Jahre in vollkommener Gesundheit erfüllen. Und wir alle glauben mit ganz reinem Herzen, Sie bald wiederzusehen. Jeder Einzelne von uns möchte Ihnen danken. Das können wir nicht. Deswegen werden wir gemeinsam sagen, danke. Pray without ceasing, pray without ceasing, walk with God, and out of the clouds of your twilight vision will come the chariot of God, and lift you up, and take you to green pastures and still waters. Und wird sie führen zu grünen Auen und stillen Wasser.